Yeah. Hey here friends. So for some reason I become possessed the idea lately to do a sunrise hike. And uh what are you growling at? What is that? I don't think I see anything, baby. Okay, well, that was a lovely intro uh, interruption. Why is that so fuzzy? So, like I was saying, for some reason I've become possessed of the idea, I don't know why nothing's focusing, of taking a sunrise hike lately. And last night, when it was raining, there seemed to be something almost romantic, definitely refreshing about the fact that the world was being washed clean and then I was going to go hiking at the ass crack of dawn, but I gotta say, flashing through the mud three steps in so that I get cold wet feet for the rest of the time is not particularly romantic. And I'm tired because this official sunrise is in um, 10 minutes. And as you can see, it's already really light. So I ran out of the house without coffee, before coffee, because I was afraid to miss it. Nothing new or exciting. So today, just a little jaunt down the OCRT and the sunrise eventually. Not that we'll be able to see much with uh, all these clouds. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves, whoever did this. And there's more up there, and I've already passed some. What in the actual fuck, my friends? That's not necessary. Well, there's my beautifully planned sunrise shot, a minute late, and all gray and diffused and only marginally brighter than a few minutes ago because of the overcast. There's a life lesson in this somewhere because it was clear skies yesterday up until it started raining last night. I should have done this yesterday if I wanted the beautiful brilliant and colorful sunrise. You'll have to settle for some creek. And on the other side of the bridge. I don't know if you can see it, but off in the distance, that light is casting some nice color on the water. I don't know where we're going, or how much longer we're going to be going for it, because I should probably be home in an hour to wake pretty husband up for work, so that he can take a um, very time-consuming steps of putting on a dress shirt, basketball shorts, and turning on his computer in our room. <laughs> because I'm sure he's not the only one that's not wearing pants to work these days. Just basketball shorts. Zoom meetings are only from the waist up, don't forget. is probably obnoxious footage to be watching right now. I don't have a steady hand. Anyway, I'm sure it's not especially steady right now.
where do you buy a selfie stick in a small town with no drugstores and no big lots? And everything is closed, including the bus lines. So we are, without a car, stuck. Because there's no buses to Syracuse at the moment. They're running in Syracuse, just not up here to Syracuse. And uh, all the DMVs are closed. So even if we bought a car right now, we couldn't register it and make it legal. So I'm going to talk about quarantine and isolation. If we're trying to observe our best practices with social distancing, <laughs> we are really going nowhere. my dead trees. I'm gonna take some pictures of my dead trees. See? Like this, I feel like would make a good painting. Maybe with a little bit better light and contrast, but Susie Barstow could make this a really cool painting. I'm not Susie Barstow. Scriba Park from the trailside view. It's pretty nice on that tree. That's a pretty tree on that tree. But yeah, there's the entrance path. Because I don't think we've gone past the park yet. One second leash. Um, so I don't think you've seen it from this point of view. It kind of blends in if you miss the path and the sign. It just sort of looks like more random forest. Like on this side, but this is somebody's yard. I can see a post-it sign in there. A couple of them, actually. <clears throat> I do wonder. I might try to talk to some homeowners along the trail and see if they have any problems on the trail because you do see posted signs and property signs and I don't know how much of that is because it's an actual problem with trail users and how much of it is just like to prevent hunting and stuff that's just a thing you do upstate his post your property signs when you don't want people uh, hunting on your property. That dead grass is a really beautiful red. Look at that. Wow. It's looking a little brighter on the phone screen. We'll see how it looks in the final, but it's actually this very rust color. Oh, here we go, if I tip it up. That's more, now the screen is showing more what I'm seeing. Very rusty red. I like how it looks on the screen though too when I tip it down and it brightens it. That nice orangey red. How weathered he is too. That's a beautiful knot. Oh, and hole. Somebody's living up in there, or was. There's a bunch of them actually. It's just gorgeous. It still feels really solid.
like I would put this in my living room maybe make it into like put some bracket shelves on it to make a bookshelf would that not be a badass bookshelf it's a good idea I should go see if there are any big solid dead trees in our back and make a bookshelf I gotta take a picture Stone Quarry Hill Art Park, which is a place I would love to take you sometime, has a piece that is a bookshelf built out of trees and stuff. With most of the books are carved out of wood, I think. I feel like back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, back when I was uh, in undergrad, there were some actual books, but they've gotten weathered over the years. Huh. Um, and it's just the wooden books that are left. And sorry, I got distracted because I found something interesting and I'm debating whether or not to be a bad girl. Anyway, uh, they have a bookshelf piece that's gorgeous. I've always loved it. And I'd love to build something like that. But in my house, So I think I found that foundation. And there's a private property sign posted right here. And that's why I'm debating being a good girl or a bad girl. You probably shouldn't drink out of that puddle pup because that is so tempting. <sighs> Fuck. But if, okay. So, if this is the foundation, then it's not part of Scribe of Park. But if people find it, there's at least a bushwhacked trail, well, and there's definitely an ATV trail over here. And somebody on the community group posted pictures, I think, of this the other day. And... First of all, how have I never seen this before? Because it's not like I've never gone this far. I'm going to be good this morning. And other days, you shouldn't trespass. Trespassing is what gives hikers a bad name. But I'm going to step up to the property side and see if I can read the address so I can get permission from the property owner to take pictures of their foundation. Well... That sign definitely needs to be replaced because I could only read a house number. I don't think I could read a street or anything. I'm going to try. I took a picture of it, which I won't share, because I'm going to try to play with some photo manipulation. So I'm contrasting and see if I can pull uh, any more information, but that was really faded and really hard to read. I also had the thought that I could post up pictures from the trail that I just took on the community group and see if anybody knows who the property owner is and put me in touch with them because it'd be much quicker and easier for everybody if I could email the person instead of having to send them a letter. So coming up to I forget what road I'll be able to tell you in a minute um, this is probably gonna be where I turn around I think I am let's check the map almost to the airfield maybe not almost maybe almost is a stretch Trying to juggle a dog and two phones right now. It's not easy. Of course, my map doesn't want to load. Okay. Kibble Lake Road is what I'm coming up to. 
Gonna focus, gonna focus, gonna focus, there you go. And actually, I think I'm quite a bit from the airfield. Come on. The airfield might not be on this map. Well, that's Johnson. Let me see, can I zoom out? Um, I think that white spot on the map might be the winery. Actually, I do. I have to be coming up close. To, you know what? Google Maps would probably be better. But I think I actually am coming up to the airfield because where the trail gets close to the road is where the winery is. And the airfield and winery, the airfield's right behind it. But it's how they um, get access to the airfield because it is behind the trail. So like road, winery, access road, airfield. Titania, you're killing me. Can you stop pulling, please? Pop. Uh, Google Maps doesn't want to give me any better. <laughs> it's not giving me any detail. The airfield is usually marked on it. Oh, look, and it's just pressing buttons. Right now. The airfield's usually marked on it, but it doesn't want to give me any detail. Can you please stop pulling? Thank you, ma'am. But, all trail says we've been out for 35 minutes, so. Yeah, it's probably almost that time. Ooh, look at this one. Look at that beauty. Pictures. Okay, I turned around before getting up to the road or crossing it because I definitely just got caught by a guy bringing out his trash, taking a picture of that beautiful mossy tree. And I definitely got a weird look and I really couldn't do anything about it or like cover up the fact that I was taking pictures of trees because I was in the middle of taking a panorama shot <laughs> with, my, with my phone's auto uh, pano setting. So uh, that happened. Ooh, look at the green things. <clears throat> so, oh, I didn't look how far out. Well, we can recap how far out we went when we have our round trip mileage, but Scribe Park is, I think, usually a mile and a half, and I'd be shocked if I'm even point two past that. If Kibble Lake Road's only 2.2 past that, so not another terribly long <clears throat> one again today, but mixed it up a little bit. Oh, they either planted daffodils in the middle of nowhere, or they have wild daffodils. Like, this is the yard of the guy that gave me the look for taking a picture of his tree, but it's daffodils back here in the woods. At least I think this is the yard of the guy that gave me the look. Look, I'm gonna give him some looks. Because it is. Do -do -do. What time is it? It is 6 59 a.m. And the whole damn world is pretty much shut down, or at least New York State is. What the hell is he doing? Taking his trash out so early. Actually, that's a stupid question because trash services are still running. So it's probably his garbage day. I wouldn't know. Our landlord gets a dumpster for all the places so we don't have uh, that kind of curbside trash pickup. 
telling you that Mossfield Foundation is tempting me to be a naughty. Ooh. This is a good one. I'm going to show you because it doesn't have anybody's address on it. Keep out. What is not your average kind of post-it sign around these parts? <coughs> I'm not sure. That's even a legal New York post-it sign. These are the ones I do believe you're supposed to have. But you see how it's blank at the bottom with those lines? You're supposed to have your name and address on those lines. I mean, it's not like it's free reign for people to march across your land if you don't, but you're supposed to. See, the problem I'm having is I'm trying to set up some nice landscape shots, especially with these leaning trees right here. And that sky's killing me. If it's just going to be that big white gray triangle, I mean, I don't have to make it so glaringly obvious. I can tone it down. But this is why I'm never going to be Susie Barsta. Oh, pretty. Look at that boy. That's a twisty one. I like him twisty. Oh, and he's got a friend with a broken arm right next to him. I'm going to throw a couple of stills in at this point. If, uh, if I can figure out how to do it. Or... You know, at some point, I'll throw in some stills because I'm really enjoying. So my main phone, my one that actually functions as a phone, is a cheap Samsung Orbic. And if you haven't heard of it, I don't blame you. It's like the Dollar General $40 smartphone or whatever. Um, and I hate it. I'm actually... I revived my S5 to record on right now. Hopefully this is going to work out. And this isn't just a bunch of jumbled bad audio and poor footage now that I figured out that focusing issue. But anyway, the Orbic, it's cheap. And it, I don't like a lot of its functionality as a camera, which I hate talking on the phone. So my phone is... 95% camera and internet device, not phone. And the other percentage is not a phone percentage, that's a text messaging <laughs> device. But, um, what was I saying? I 100% lost my train of thought there. <clears throat> It'll come back to me. Camera. That's what I was talking about. Okay. <laughs> I told you it would come back. So, the Orbic is a pretty crap camera. Um, I mean, the video quality isn't the worst. But I feel like a lot of the video issues I've been having lately are related to the Orbic or my SD card. One or the other, but I don't have problems with this SD card um, in other devices, so I think it's the camera does something sometimes. Anyway, um, it does have a panorama function where it can, like, it's almost like it... It films them. I don't know. I've never had a pano function on a phone before or on a camera. Uh, my my digital photo teacher taught us how to hand stitch. And I, there's something kind of tedious yet meditative about hand stitching a digital panorama. So I'm, I'm weird and I kind of like to do it by hand. But 
the Orbic doesn't have an HDR setting <clears throat> on its camera. So if you've seen, sometimes I talk about the light shifting. Um, well, like, okay. So like the trail is really well lit now because I'm pointed down at the trail. And now the trees are all dark because I'm pointing at the sky. My Orbic does that with picture taking mode too. I don't have an HDR function like I do on the Samsung. And I, I have no idea where that cut out on me. So I'm gonna voice over explain my panorama mode and what I've been playing with on my Orbic and just show you still shots now. I feel defeated and I've also almost filled my phone so it's a good thing that we're getting close to home. Within a mile of home, as Floggin' Molly would say. about the abrupt ending there. I ran out of storage space on my way home and I'm sorry about the watermark in the corner of the whole video but I wanted to test out the free version of this app before I committed to buying it. So far I'm pretty happy. I don't know. Let me know what you all think. It seems to have just the same editing capabilities as what I was using on my computer and it's nicer to have a one-stop shop with my old S5. Uh, I like it. I'm not going to tell you to like or comment or anything because I don't tell you how to live your life. But if you liked what you saw, YouTube's suggesting another one for you, and I will see you again next week. Bye!